So before we get into the medulla fight, we're going to go over all the android girls and their attacks so you can understand how each one is going to have to behave during these fights. Yes, there is about 9 of them during this battle and some of them are better suited to certain phases than others and others are just very difficult to use because of the way the weapons are designed. So starting with Cactus, she is her general, your general purpose damage dealer. Unfortunately, her flamethrower, the extreme short range it has, is a... It does decent damage near the at actually, but unfortunately near the end phases of the fight, the extremely short range and the fact that you have to keep it on the enemies to deal full damage makes it very difficult to actually keep it on the bosses and on the sub enemies that are going to appear throughout the fight, making it very difficult to deal complete damage with it. So you're pretty much better off relying on a level 3 assault primary weapon to deal most of your damage. Unfortunately, it stops on enemies and when you're dodging around, some enemies are going to take the damage for the boss. But this can also be good because by killing them, you might get some power-ups that are very crucial to the fight such as lockdown or uh, firepower. So moving on, we have Holly. Now she is the underdog throughout the entire game. Her cannonball is very slow and has only a mid-range. But it does take, it pretty much takes out every regular enemy it literally bumps into. Her primary weapon, the Seeker Missiles, also have mid-range, however, they are pretty weak. And when you're surrounded by a lot of enemies, if it's not fully powered up, it's going to take you quite a while to take down all of those enemies because they're going all over the place and hitting different enemies at the same time. Now, once it's maxed out up to level 3, it actually does very decent damage because everything is going down very quickly. And then the missiles start focusing down the last things remaining. And then everything dies. However, in order to do this properly, you need to get to level 3, which is pretty hard against this boss. So, in the final phase, she is actually the best one suited for that phase. But it's very hard to get her to that final phase. Moving on to Lemon. How her spread shot is generally useful throughout the entire game for taking out all these small enemies. And in the very final phase of the fight. But apart from that, because it's a spread shot, it doesn't do quite as much damage as, say, Cactus, because it's, well, spread. So you have to get up close and near personal almost as much as a shotgun to a boss to deal full damage so that every bullet is actually hitting him, and you're dealing maximum damage in order to finish the fight before your battery runs out. Now her secondary, the rockets, are actually, they're decent. Unfortunately, you stop at the very first enemy, so it can be stopped by little wasp robots or tentacles or whatever it is that it's in your way. But it's not that bad because if you kill it, you have a chance of getting, well, a power-up. Not because of her weapon, just because of the game, way the game is designed. Now, because her secondary weapon is based on ammo, you can fire off one rocket and then switch back. All By switching back, you activate the invincibility frames again. So you can switch, dodge something, and then switch back and dodge another thing. And it also reduces the cooldown if you only fire one or two or none of the rockets. So you can constantly be, be switching back and forth to avoid damage. But it's actually pretty useful once you learn how to do it. Now, Koro is the android I used to beat it the first time I managed to beat Medula with. Her shotgun does a lot of damage, especially once you get up close so that every shot hits the boss. Her stacy field is extremely useful during the first phases of the fight to avoid a lot of the bullets. And if you put it right on top of the boss, it will deal constant damage to it while giving you a little safe area behind the field where the boss's bullets will not hit. Now, if you activate it, the bullets that are deflected are still hostile, so they can still hurt you, so watch out for that. And it can sometimes screw you over when you forget you place it down and bullets are now heading in a completely different direction and you've lost sight of the pattern that the bullets are going. Starch, she is extremely reliant on her secondary micro missile weapon because her primary laser doesn't deal that much damage to the boss or really to anything. It does have infinite range, but because it deals very little damage and you need to leave it on the target for at least a second to kill it, it's not particularly useful. And you'll once I was able to beat it with her, uh, the, I realized how little damage and the best way to deal with bosses on her is to just spam her micro missiles as often as possible, although that, doesn't, that isn't always possible because you also need to be using the invincibility frames to dodge attacks and so on and so forth. Now, Aubergine is actually very decent in, throughout the entire fight. You can have Hilo on top of the boss the entire fight while you're dodging as, and you get used to keeping Hilo on the boss while dodging things. And as he levels up, his area of effect goes up, so you, you can deal damage to the boss and to some of the secondary enemies. The downside is that when you move it around, he actually has a very slow travel time. Not as slow as Holly's cannonball, but pretty slow. So if you need to take care of something quickly, it's going to be pretty hard. 
Also, her secondary power, the Singularity, draws all enemies into the center of it from all over the map, although relatively slowly. But once they're there, they're stuck there for about two seconds on a full charge, a secondary weapon. Once they're in there, you can put Hilo on top of them, and they'll all be taking damage from Hilo. Now, unfortunately, when you activate it, Hilo will travel back to you, and basically, by the time he gets back to you, you're ready to you switch back to him, so he's basically wasting two entire seconds of not dealing damage to anybody. So you should keep that in mind. Now Shitake, her real gun has infinite range and pierces everything and doesn't reduce in damage, which makes it very a very powerful weapon once you level it up. However, because there aren't that many enemies throughout the entire fight, most of that power is wasted because it it's, it is powerful, but you're only hitting one thing at a time most of the time. And even when there's multiple things on the map, it's really hard to hit multiple of them because of the way they're positioned and because you have a very limited time to take all of them out. Now, the problem with her is that her secondary weapon, the propeller mine, becomes useless near the end of the fight. Now, the reason is that the boss will be switching throughout phases a lot of the time, and most of those phases involve him getting away from you which is the opposite thing you want for the propeller mines. So you have to chase them down, but you will never be close enough to the point where they will actually out or detonate once they're out. So it becomes pretty much useless throughout most of the fight, and you're relying primarily on your railgun, which does do okay damage, but it does take quite a while to mount up. So it's actually pretty hard to beat the game with her. Pina, she's also pretty hard. Her magma weapon is decent in damage, although not particularly good. I think the point of the weapon that I haven't really mastered yet is the fact that it leaves magma on the floor and it deals damage to anybody that walks on it. However, because you're hitting the boss straight on, the magma part of the weapon goes away, so there's really not much you can do. And until you get it to level 3, it really isn't particularly powerful. Then, then there's her drill. Her drill is actually very difficult to use in this fight, because most of the time, let's see, in core form, you can actually deal full damage to it, but then you get pushed back a little bit far and you can fall on top of something you don't want to and then you get one shot and you get down and then you have to spam your mouse button to get back up and you've lost pretty much all your power-ups and everything so it's very difficult to use you can use it to take out most of the secondary enemies that appear throughout the fight but it is pretty difficult to aim that thing you can use it to get across the map very quickly and you can interrupt it while dealing damage to a boss to stop right at the boss it's very difficult to use, but it is a little bit powerful, so I really wouldn't recommend her for this fight because of those reasons. So once you beat Medulla, you unlock Licorice, so you, or Licorice as it's supposed to be pronounced, and she is actually very decent but very difficult to use because of her Vorpor Blade secondary weapon. Her primary weapon is exactly what it looks like, she fires up some pretty powerful shots at a decent speed. Once it goes up in level, it shoots faster and then it shoots twin bullets so it becomes a very decent DPS weapon. Now, her Vorpal Blade is very difficult to use because, you, unlike what it will appear, you're not invulnerable while actually using the attack, only while switching weapons. And if you're like me and you keep the mouse pressed the entire time, you get into quite a bit of trouble very quickly. So how do you use this weapon during the boss fights? It's best to do it when you know that on the other side of the boss, there is nothing that can hit you, like say a bunch of bullets, or Vespulous Thorns, or pretty much anything else. However, it does do a great amount of damage. It does like one quarter or one third of a boss's health, depending if it's locked down or not. So it is extremely powerful, and you can use it to get away by teleporting to the other side of the boss to get away from a lot of bullets, which you can do very effectively with her once you get her down. So she is pretty powerful, but very difficult to use. And that is all of them, so now let's go on to the fight itself. Okay, so on to the medulla fight. I'm going to slow it down to half speed throughout the entire fight so I can explain what is going on and you can actually get a good look at all of its attacks and abilities. Now right here at the very beginning, what you want to do is as the rings are coming out, you want to switch over to your secondary weapon so that you can use the invincibility frames to dodge the entire ring and then get into the inner ring which is where you want to be. This is where there are the least amount of blue little pellets are, and it's where you are the safest once the lasers start happening. Now, after a half turn of the lasers, it will suck the balls in, and then you get lasers going in the opposite direction, and they're going faster. The good part is that they have to power up, and throughout the power up phase, you can go through them, and they won't do anything. 
Now, unlike what I am doing here, you want to stop once the lasers are past you, go to the opposite side of the laser and then reset. That way you don't have this happen to you. So once that phase is over, you are now onto the embryo phase, which is actually relatively easy once you get into position. It's, the position is right there in front of him and slightly to your left. This means he is going to be constantly turning over to face you and then moving backwards. This will make it so that he is traveling the entirety of the arena in a clockwise formation. This will give you the space you need to avoid all those rockets that are falling down. It will make it so that they don't hit you and you're avoiding all of his bullets. You're also close enough to use basically any weapon from any girl in close quarters, including Shitake's mines, I think. But as you can see, it's really not that hard once you get the hang of it. Now comes the second pellet phase. Now, Kuro here has a very easy time dealing with them and getting to the very center of the ring, where as you can see, there are very little bullets and it's even easier to dodge them because they're going a lot slower. So stay in the inner ring, do as much damage as you can with all your weapons in the most effective way possible, but keep your secondary weapon ready for this part right here. During this part, where he pulls him over, I fail miserably, but you can use your invisibility frames to get past the entirety of the ring. Now here I get lucky and I find a little way in as the pilots are moving, so I manage to get back into the inner ring and I heal back up because I take no damage and don't die. Now Kuro's a bit OP during this these phases because she all of her little mini shots hit her and they do a tremendous amount of damage, as you can see. And now comes one of the harder phases, Vespula. Now this is an exact copy of the final Vespula phase, just like with Embryo. So you're dodging the wasp, you're dodging the thorns, and you're dodging the saw blades. Now avoid picking up the pickup that you get from Medulla during the pass phase until it becomes a lock a lockdown, so you can get a bit of a cooldown. And during lockdown, when an enemy is locked down, you can deal increased damage to them. So as you can see here, I'm pulling back to get a little bit of a breather, but you can see me dodging the blades very, just barely, staying inside the ring of wasps and trying my best to dodge the thorns. Now right there, I get a final shot before I die, which changes the phase, which is okay, because I also managed to get my secondary weapon off. Now this is the blue laser part of the fight. And during this fight, the lizards that appear will head to the last position that you were when they spawned. They will not chase you. Now, this would be easy if it weren't for the big rings of bullets that appear out of nowhere. So during this phase, you want to switch to your secondary weapon to avoid those little rings of lasers. You can dodge through the bullets if you're fast enough, but depending on your luck, it may not be as easy as it looks. For example, right here, I barely managed to dodge. I take one shot, but I still get hit. Luckily, my secondary weapon is there, is shocking her constantly. And now comes the most difficult part of the fight, the justice phase. You are dealing with a lot of stuff. You cannot get close to him because he will summon a force field and basically one shot, shot you. Then there's the saw blades, which will also one shot you. And then there's the laser, which will also one shot you. So yeah, everything in this fight one shots you. Now during, as you can see, <laughs> so during this fight, the, the best thing you can do is to pick up a lockdown power up like that. This will lock everything down. Now you want to use this opportunity to deal damage as you turn around and head towards the little posts and take those out. The reason you want to take them out is because they have a chance of dropping power-ups, which means more lockdowns or more firepower or whatever it is you may or may not need. Now right there, the that blade came out from outside the screen and I didn't see it. Luckily, because we have a shotgun, we do a lot of now here we managed to skip through, because of the two lockdowns we got, we skipped throughout the second phase of Justice, and he goes straight to his Mega Laser. As long as you keep moving in a direction, you will not get hit by the Mega Laser, even though it is a bit intimidating. So just keep, keep going in a direction, and you will not get hit by it. And now we come to probably the most difficult part outside of the final phase. You have tentacles that will one-shot you if they hit you, you have shock traps with deal damage every 0.5 seconds, and then you have that big laser and you have bullet rings, so there's a lot of things to dodge. Now the upside is that all those things can be destroyed and give you power-ups. So with Lemon, as you're shooting the boss, part of your weapon will go in uh, to the sides and hit them and eventually take them down. In my case, I am abusing Coral's stasis field ability to deal damage to the boss and deal damage to anything that is appearing near me. Now, Medulla herself will block the laser as you can see, so you can use her as a shield. If you're using Licorice, you can teleport to the other side of Medulla to avoid the laser entirely. Now, you need to be very careful because 
Dying during that phase of the fight means that more stuff will spawn and you have very limited time to pick up the battery again. So that is the phase you want to die the least in. And once that happens, we are now into the final phase of the fight. Now during this phase, Medulla is no longer targetable and will summon a lot of enemies, starting with these cube things, they always appear down here in the south. These will charge at you like regular enemies and deal damage to you once they reach you. So depending on who you're using, you may want to... Before they spawn, you may want to lay down your mines or to get into position to hit as many as possible. Now these things are annoying because you have to chase them down because they will avoid you and shoot bullets in your general direction. Then there's the star things that will shoot bullets in a predictable pattern and constantly head towards you, so they're two double menace. Now the hollow cubes will head in your general direction and if they reach you, they will explode and one shot you. So you need to be careful with those as well. So as you can see, this phase is very hectic. Right now it's looking very slow because I'm slowing it down so you can see and appreciate everything that's going on. The other thing about these hollow cubes is they take a lot of damage to take down, as you can see. Now the most dangerous ones are those, the double diamonds that appear that launch the laser. That laser will one shot you and they can spawn two at a time. So you need to take those out as quickly as possible. Once you're about halfway through, you will get all these cubes again and they will all charge at you and it gets very annoying. And the good thing is that once you respawn, you push everything away so you get a little bit of a breather. Now Coral's stasis field ability is very useful here because since everything charges at you, you basically lay a trap for them and they fall straight into it. So as you can see, you get here are the double laser, double diamonds or pyramids, whatever it is. And they are the most dangerous. Once you get those down, you are going to probably be at this point now, I barely managed to take out that hollow cube before it explodes. So you need to be doing this part, you need to hurry. Now, as you can see, that little star that is charging you is the most annoying one because he moves around a lot. But once you take out all the enemies, the fight is over, you have won, and you have to successfully clear the game. Doing this with every character, once you get to know the fight is actually not that hard. However, Shitake and Peanut are actually very difficult to do it with. So you're going to need a lot of practice with them, especially using their secondary abilities because they require you to be either cl very close to the boss who runs away from you and the drill is very difficult to use as well. So there you go. So that is the entire fight in slow motion. Now I'm going to play it again in norm at normal speed so you can appreciate the fight as it actually is. It's actually only about three and a half minutes of the fight. So here you go.